Hi Gecko fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Gecko. Welcome to another video, and today we're going to talk about a really cool gecko. It's Pachydaclus fasciatus. In fact, you could call it a fascinating gecko. I've worked with Pachydaclus fasciatus on and off for about five or six years. I really enjoy the gecko because it's a smaller gecko. I wouldn't consider it a micro gecko, but it is a smaller gecko of about four to five inches in length. This is a gecko that for Supreme Gecko is always in demand. Anytime that I put it on our page, it seems like it sells within just a few days. They really have minimal requirements. We have a food dish, a water dish, some rocks, a sand substrate, a small enclosure, we give them lots of heat, and we'll see all this in just a second, but it's just so simple to keep these animals. This is a West Coast African gecko that is in the hobby, but you rarely find it in pet stores. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup for these animals and the animals themselves. Because these are small animals, I have them set up on this really nice gray stand here. These are five gallon tanks. I think these are four gallon cubes. And you can see that we're running six different tanks here. This is a real, real simple setup. I have a light on top for a couple of these tanks. For our morning geckos here, I certainly don't. Uh, there's no heat pad here on this first shelf or top shelf. For the shelf down below, we do have a heat pad, uh, heat tape, and that's running uh, around 75 degrees or so just to keep the temperature a little bit warmer but the key to this setup is that we have these real small wattage lights on top this not only keeps the top tanks a little bit warmer it keeps the bottom tanks a little bit warmer but that heat from this lower light actually extends into these top tanks and keeps them a little bit warmer too it just works out really really well for us Here's the fasciatus, and I'm gonna pull this tank out, but you can see that it's set up real simple. Water dish, food dish, sand. We have the egg cartons, and we have tile in between the egg cartons. Super, super easy, and that's really, really all that they need. You can really do whatever decorating you want with these tanks, but for me and for breeding purposes, this works out very well. Let's pull that tank and let's take a look at these animals. Here we go with a side view and you can see it's very simple. Again, the egg cartons, the slate, the food dish, and we always keep food in these tanks, and the water dish. I just removed this tank off the stand. I'll see if I can do this one-handed, but I wanted to get a temperature reading. So it's 90 degrees, it's probably gone down, with that light on it, it's probably gone down four to five degrees since I removed this tank. Let's go ahead and take a look at these animals. Again, we have these set up specifically for breeding purposes. So I'm gonna to try to be as gentle as I possibly can here, but it might be tricky. What I'm doing now is looking for eggs because sometimes we'll pull these and we'll find eggs in these cartons. Here's one of the animals and you can see how just beautiful these animals are. It looks like it's looking to get out by jumping up, but usually they don't jump up. They usually run under the hide. So I'm gonna be prepared here, but I think we're okay. Beautiful animals. This is an adult coloring. You can see the orange in the tail. You can see why they're called fasciatus and it looks like he is going to come up. So I'm going to shoo him back down into the enclosure and we're gonna see if we can get uh, take a look at that other one. See so if we can get a real quick close up of this animal. as it heads off down 
under this tile. What I've found is that they usually lay their eggs rather than in the sand, they lay them in these little compartments in the egg cartons, which makes this whole setup that much more functional. Let's take this last layer off. We'll probably find, we'll certainly find the other fasciatus in here. And I'm looking at the egg carton and I really was hoping to find some eggs, but, but I did have a link to another video where I shared collecting eggs out of these egg cartons, which was pretty handy. And I'll share that right here. Let's pull this last egg carton and we'll take a look at the two animals together. And I'm doing this really slowly so we don't really disturb the animals too much here. Again, they are very, very quick, but they tend to sit, stay um, more toward the substrate. So I'm not too worried here with these animals getting out. In fact, I'm going to check the substrate just real quick here. I'll shoo this animal over so we can take a peek. Got a little bit of a sound there. A little squeak from the animal. And I'm just gently combing through the substrate here looking for some eggs. Usually in these piles uh, where it's a little bit higher sand, I'll generally find the eggs. I checked uh, within this last month and I didn't find, or I did find some eggs. So we have those incubating. So I didn't really expect to find any here, but I did want to show you this enclosure. Let me straighten up the sand. We have one climbing the glass here. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to try to convince it to go back down. While we have it on the glass, let me see if I can get a close up of that underside. Let's put these adults back and as a treat, we're going to go ahead and show the babies of these uh, Pachydactylus fasciatus. Super cool looking. Be right back. It's time for our Supreme Pro Tip. One really important note I want to make about these animals is that in the hobby, there's a lot of wild caught animals available on list currently. What you want to do is when you contact a breeder or contact a pet store or anyone online, ask them if the animals are captive bred instead of wild caught. There's a lot of issues with wild caught animals and you just want to avoid those issues. There's plenty of animals that are captive bred currently in the hobby. Make sure that you get one of those animals. Here is our typical Pachydactylus fasciatus baby setup. And you can see it's a little six quart container, plenty of ventilation on the top. I cut out a hole, put in some screening. It's all set for babies. This is a tub that I keep on our, what I call our micro stand, where we have 20 different uh, tubs set up like this. Let's go ahead and take a look inside and you'll find that it's fairly similar to the adults. Sand substrate, a couple of hides. Again, these two that we'll see here were born uh, three months ago. Let's go ahead and take a peek. As I mentioned, this is again very similar to the adult sand substrate, a couple of hides, a water dish, a food dish. I'm feeding these microworms. I also feed small dubias. I actually give them the larger um, fruit flies as well. They really enjoy them. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer on these guys. And you can see their colors mimic their parents quite a bit here. Cool little gecko. You see the other one staring me down. I put in the cork bark. I really wasn't sure if it, uh, these guys would use the cork bark or not. Uh, I've typically used these small hides uh, egg carton as well. 
but they seem to enjoy, enjoy the uh, egg carton. In another month or so, we'll probably start looking to see if we can see the sex of these animals at about four or five months old. Again, super easy gecko to work with. Beautiful colors. I love the, the, I love the beautiful bronze in this animal. Easy to feed, easy to maintain. Great little gecko to work with. Again, I really love working with these Pachydactylus fasciatus. They're super easy to work with. They're always in demand. They're a small gecko. Great animal to work with. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notifications all, and I thank you for watching.